Hey folks, it's a stressed out, hot mess Raina coming to you live from my living room because fixing tails in a living room is the best way to do it. This is a two-parter video that is going to be showing my experience slash a tutorial on how to fix a silicone mermaid tail. It does come with some disclaimers, so we're going to say that for both videos. And before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to like and subscribe. Click the bell if you want to get notifications in your email inbox whenever I update and tell me what you think. If you have any suggestions or questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Check me out on patreon.com slash mermaid for as little as $2 a month. You can get a ton, and I mean a ton, of program planning resources for your mermaid business. You get access to early videos. We're also going to have a longer version of these two videos available for people who really want to get into the nitty gritty, and that's just going to be on Patreon. So as for my disclaimers, this is part one, and for part one, I talk a lot about ventilation and making sure that you can breathe clearly and Sean and I at the time of filming part one felt that we had adequate ventilation and we did not. We ended up with headaches and feeling sick afterwards which was a sign that we did not have enough airflow like we thought. So I went out and bought um, an air regulating mask and I just want to give the disclaimer that even though we did not use one of these masks in the first video, we did in the following video and for the rest of the days that it took us to fix the tail. And I would just recommend that even though I give you a whole spiel about it in this video, you should still actually use one. We were really surprised. Even though we had all this extra ventilation, we still ended up getting a little sick from the fumes and we had to put our cats in a room and stuff, so do that. The second disclaimer I want to give you, and I'm going to say this on both videos, I really want to drill it into your head, is that doing your own repairs on your tail for very minor things like little cuts or little scrapes, little paint chips, that's not a big deal, but for anything as major as what I am doing, you should absolutely contact your tail maker and doing the fixes yourself should be a last resort because number one, it may void your warranty. Number two, the tail maker is going to have access to materials at a cheaper cost than you do, so trying to buy it all yourself and do it yourself when they can do it cheaper and more reliable because they have the experience. And then number three, you might mess it up. The only reason I am doing this myself is because I had no alternative. I did send it to another mermaid when my tail maker was not available to do this. I sent it to another tail maker who's a friend of mine who was going to patch test and see if she could fix it with some higher quality materials and she could not, they wouldn't bond to it and we talk about that in the videos. So you're taking a risk too if you let somebody else try to fix it as well. So I just want to give that disclaimer that the type of overhaul I'm doing on my tail is a last, last, last resort and if you choose to do it, you are doing it at your own risk. I accept none of the consequences. I am just sharing my experience and some of these things I'll tell you in the video are totally reliable and you can do them and I will tell you when it's something that I'm just kind of making a hot mess out of because I need to make my tail functional. So thank you so much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hey folks, today on the show I am showing something that people have been asking forever, how to fix and repair your mermaid gear. So we're going to be doing this over the course of a few nights, so Sean and I are going to take video each step of the way. We have to do some repairs to the she creature, we have to do some repairs to this top, we have to do some repairs to the headdresses. So we've got a little repair station set up here along with our camera gear so we can film for you what we're going to do. So first things first, if you've got long hair like I do, you want to get it up out of the way because you're going to be dealing with different types of glues and adhesives and you don't want that in your hair. Oh, bleep that. Yeah. <laughs> also, we have our windows open to create some ventilation. We have a fan, we have an air purifier. You really want to do this stuff in a well-ventilated space. You may even want to consider wearing a particulate mask. I wasn't able to get one and I've sort of worked with these materials before so I kind of know my limit. But if you have asthma or any kind of breathing impairment or if you're going to be doing sick significant repairs and there's not enough airflow, you definitely are going to want a type of mask. Keeping in line with safety, we're going to have some gloves and I just get mine from the dollar store because you're probably going to throw them out when you're done. These are yours, Sean. <laughs> so you've got some gloves. You want to make sure that your space is going to be okay if it gets silicone on it. So we live in an apartment with crabby carpet. So we put down a tarp so that if I get silicone on this, that's okay. I've also got a fan for ventilation purposes and to help blow the air across my tail. I've got some paper towel here. Now in terms of gear, what you're going to need for a silicone tail to fix it. The issue with silicone is that it has a green period meaning that once that green period is over, it's incredibly difficult to make it accept new 
Dragon Skin Silicone. Dragon Skin Silicone is a platinum cure silicone which cures by a chemical process. So you get two ingredients, you mix them together, and the mixing together is what makes them start to cure. And then we have caulking, which is a different type of cure. It cures by the air. So when your silicone is past its green period, the only type of silicone it's going to accept is a caulking base. So there's a specific type of caulking base you can use, and there is also an adhesive called Silpoxy that is made by the same company that makes the Dragon Skin Silicone. So it's called Silpoxy Rubber Adhesive. MERS use it to attach the dorsal fins and other fins. It's great for spot repairs. There are some differences between the two. The caulking is going to come out a lot thicker, and even though it's clear, it's going to have a bit of a whitish tinge to it when it cures. So we use Verisol. This is where that mask or ventilation is going to come in handy. You don't need a lot, it's paint thinner, but if you mix it with it, it makes it a little bit easier to spread. It does have a different consistency, so I don't recommend using this type of silicone on your actual scales or anything that the person is going to see because it is going to change that consistency. Meanwhile, the Silpoxy is just pure gold. You can put that stuff on there, it's just smooths on totally clear or you can tint it if you want to, but you won't even know it's there. I had to fix some huge holes in my regular Marbella's tail and I used that and you would never even know I had holes there before. So this is great for the cosmetic stuff. It's also really expensive and if you don't live in the States, it's really expensive to ship it as well. I got my friend Tracy to pick this up for me and mail it to me. It was cheaper to get her to do that than for me to buy it from the company and try to ship it. They wanted to charge me 30 bucks for the tube and then 30 bucks for shipping. So really sucks for international people. It's not on Amazon Prime. <laughs> as for the silicone, you can use any brand, but GE Silicone is the best. You want silicone type 1. You want it to be clear. You want it to be some kind of water resistant. This particular brand is mold resistant and it won't shrink and it's totally waterproof. I have another backup one here, which is DAP, and it's the same thing. A lot of MERS use aquarium grade silicone and it just means that it's safe for use around animals once cured, but these ones are meant for your bathroom so they're safe for around people and animals once cured. Most of this product, it should be safe when cured. When you're reading the ingredients and the materials list that gives you all the cautions, that tends to apply to the uncured stuff. So that's why we're doing stuff like having the air quality, the masks if needed, the gloves if needed, that sort of thing. So it's the uncured product that can be dangerous, but cured silicone is it's made for all kinds of products and it's totally safe once it's cured. So we've got our silicone. You'll want a caulking gun and as you can see mine is well loved and used. In order to make your silicone stick you're going to need some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, so whenever we go to fix something we're going to clean it with that. You're going to want some pigments and I don't think you need to buy giant ones. You can actually get testers from Michaels or online and these are the Jacquard Prolex pigments and I just got them in the colors that I needed. You can also mix them in a pinch. You can use eyeshadow. You can also use face powder as well to try to get a skin tone as well. So I've got those. We're going to want some mixing cups and black pen so that you can label what silicone, what silicone with aerosol, what silpoxy, that sort of thing. Grab yourself a pair of scissors in case. Power Mesh. So Power Mesh is a great product for making patches inside the tail so that it's got some more strength to it, it's more durable, it gives you that nice skin tone. You can get them in a variety of colors. This one is actually darker than I normally use because I, I can't seem to find my light stuff anymore. So it is going to be a bit darker than I want, but I, in a pinch that's what I've got. And this is what a lot of tail makers use for their waistlines in their tails, so we're going to use that to replace my waistline. But I also use it when I do patch jobs on my top. You can see that I did a patch job here on the other side and I reinforced it with the power mesh and then when you look at it at the front, it helps with that little tear that's there, keeps it all there. I need to go over that with some silpoxy. Sean's actually going to be doing some repairs to this top for me. This power mesh is great. I have a box of plastic cutlery and I suggest that not because I like to promote single use plastics but because you're going to have to throw out probably whatever you use because the silicone sticks to everything and ruins everything it touches. I usually get some cheap makeup brushes from the dollar store. I like them better than paint brushes. They tend to be a little bit easier for doing sort of fine detail work of fixing things. I have cats. 
So I have a bad kitty spray bottle because this is poisonous to your animals while it's curing, so I like to spray them to keep them away. For fixing the headdresses, you can use a number of glues. E6000 is one of the more popular ones. It's clear. I also really like Gorilla Glue. It's also waterproof. It's not clear, but it doesn't really matter for putting barrettes on the back because you're not going to see it. I've got some mixing sticks here as well. I've also got some little clamps. These come in handy if you need to pin something together. So later on, we're going to fix part of the fluke that is coming apart. And once I put that silicone in there, I can clamp it to hold it closed while it's drying. So those are really great. Just got those at the dollar store, but you can buy industrial size ones as well. And then we've just got some dollar store spatulas. They're good for if you have big spaces of silicone that you need to spread out, which is going to be our waistline for us so that we can spread that out. You want those gloves as well because you might want to spread things out with your finger to get the same consistency. So let's take a look at some of the things we're going to fix. We're going to start with the back of this tail tonight. <laughs> there is a lot of work to be done. This tail is being used for a movie and I asked my tail maker, I've been asking her for years, if she would be able to take the body off and replace it because the body is so old that it won't accept anything new other than caulking. So every time I break it, I have to keep fixing it. It's going to be more caulking than it is silicone at some point, right? So she has been unable to do that because she's been too busy. And I approached another tail maker who took the tail from me in January and just sent it back to me in May. She tested everything. She called Smooth On. They recommended a really expensive chemical that they could put on the tail and it would wake up the silicone. She tried all these patch tests. Unfortunately, nothing worked because ideally we were going to have her wake up the silicone and, you know, redo the body of the tail, repaint everything, make it look really nice and fresh for the movie. So that didn't pan out. So I really have to just fix some of these things so that I can get it functional. The nice thing is we took this out for a test swim last weekend and you actually can't see most of these flaws, but we still want to fix it because we don't want those flaws to get worse, right? So if there's a little rip just because it doesn't show up on video doesn't mean we want to leave it there because it can rip open. I'm going to start with all the back and if you want to come closer, I'll show you some of the damage that we're going to be fixing. So the fluke has split in several places and we want to reinforce that because eventually what's going to happen is the fluke is going to completely split. So we're going to go through this whole fluke and just check for any splits and we're going to fix those. The center, this little hole here is actually torn so we're going to reinforce that and also my cat Luna out of three cats, she's the only cat that likes to chew on tails and she loves to chew that little center piece. So we're going to repaint that and fix that. There's a couple spots you can see where the old color of this tail is, is through. It actually used to be a brown tail. So we're going to try to fix those spots as you can see. We also have a lot of damage along the dorsal that we're going to fix. So some of it is scuffs, but as we get up closer here, you can actually see that it's damaged. There's some holes and stuff. So we're going to fix that scrapes. Some of this is actually just from putting it in the mail and sending it back and forth. And then the worst thing that we're going to try to fix here is this waistline. You can see I propped it open with a blanket and I put some plastic so that it's not going to stick to it. And there's some really bad tears there. That one's right down to the scales. And that's going to be a lot of work. You can see I've done some other patch jobs on it. And you can see here how the silicone makes a different consistency. The caulking makes a different consistency. So it does look different. And if I pull this out, I can show you the whole thing. So you can see why I wanted to remake it because this waistline is pretty much all patch jobs. Those are all patch jobs. It has torn so many times. You can see the consistency difference there. The nice thing is that stuff doesn't show up on camera. Kids don't really pay attention to it and it's very easily covered with a belt or a gap wrap. So what I'm looking for today is just functionality, really. We're gonna fix this back part. We're gonna reinforce everything so that I can put this tail on without fear that pieces are gonna rip off. So that's our goal for tonight. And it is gonna take a few nights to do because it's gonna have to cure and do another layer and cure. You can't make it too thick because the air needs to be able to permeate into that silicone. I also got myself a cushion to sit on. You're going to be down low, you're going to be crouching, you're going to be doing things, so you definitely want to be able to do that. So for Sean, Sean is going to be fixing my top for me. This top is a few years old and it's actually completely separating from the bra on the inside. 
So we're gonna get him to actually silicone it all back together in all those holes so that, and then we'll clamp it so it gets really nice and good. And then we've just got some spots here where it's starting to rip and just needs a little bit of reinforcement so it doesn't look too ratty on camera. You can see there's like a hole there, pieces of silicone coming apart here. That actually lost paint. <laughs> we might even just take that little scale off. It's been well loved and well used. Thankfully, these have held up, but sometimes you have to replace these clasps. And the neck is okay. It has stretched out a bit, so what I actually do when I wear it is I put double-sided tape on it to hold it in place so that it doesn't do this rolly thing while it's on me. So Sean's gonna fix that, and I'm gonna get him to fix my, my poor rusty old clips. So we're gonna take these off because they won't stay closed once they get put on the wig. They're, like, see that one won't close? And there's a bad kitty. See ya, see ya, see ya. Spend enough time with a mermaid, they don't care about getting wet. So those ones need to be fixed. This one, they're not even on it anymore. So he's gonna put some there. So that's another one of the things that I have there. I've got some barrettes. And babe, when you do that, you just wanna make sure they're pointing in the right direction. So he'll fix those. He's gonna peel off the old glue. See how that old glue kinda has to get pulled off? and then he'll put new ones on and then I can wear them. We want a bunch of these because we're trying to make it look in the film like it's been a montage of days. So I need different things to wear so that it looks like time is passing, right? And in typical reign of fashion, I'm doing this days before we have to film because I've been that level of busy. <laughs> so Sean is gonna put this camera down and we're gonna get started. We've got our GoPro, it's gonna show you everything. We'll try to show you some close-ups of some things. We'll speed up some others. We're gonna check in with you over the next couple of days and show you how things are working. So it's gonna be great. So I mixed the caulking with the Verisol and a base layer of pigment and I've taken power mesh and I've put about two inches of it past the waistline so that I can get all of these holes where the patches are and then once it's cured I'll trim it to what I need it to be. But basically what I have to do is I have to get layers built up and let it dry and do more layers until it's the same thickness of the rest of the tail. And then this is just a base once it's done I will do a thin layer over top of the right colors to kind of blend it. It's pretty haphazardly done at the moment. I'm trying to smooth it all out right now. I'm trying to get it to be the same consistency. So power mesh is really great for stuff like this. If you come up closer, you can see that I still have a gap here where the power mesh is patching behind it so that's going to take three or four layers i'm going to have to let this dry and then keep layering that because if i make it too thick it's not going to cure all the way through and i've just got these weights on here to try to press it into the power mesh so that it's not curing separated from it so i'm just trying to smooth it out with the spatula this is why i use a dollar store spatula because this thing is going to be no good for food when i'm done so yeah, I picked this base color because it kind of matched most of what's there, but what I'll do is use the other pigments and get it to look right when I'm done here. So this is just the back. I'm going to have to let it sit for a few hours tonight and then come back to it tonight and try to finish it tonight so that tomorrow I can flip this over into the front. So it is going to take those few layers. So like this is not ideal. You'd rather have a gap wrap or somebody make a new waistline for you. This is all I can do for now, so it is what it is. Bye, Pinky. <laughs> I can't spray her, she doesn't care. I'm gonna move that fan from the fluke because you can take a look at the fluke and what we've done so far. So it's curing pretty well. That center line is pretty goopy, but once that first layer clear dries, I can go over it with a clear layer to smooth it out. Over where the clamps are, I fix the pieces coming apart there. And then you can see the dorsal fin has been fixed and it's looking pretty good. I also fixed a couple of spots that were shining through. You can't even tell they're there anymore. So this is why you need good ventilation. This is pretty strong. I'm okay because I've got lots of air coming through, but if you're asthmatic or something, multiple chemical sensitivities, you're gonna want something. 
I'm going to keep working at this. We'll show you what it looks like when it's done, and then tomorrow we're going to flip it over and try to do the front. So we're making progress, guys. We're making progress. Thanks for checking us out.